Hi and welcome to episode 43 of the Bex Creates podcast. My name is Bex and I'm coming to you from a very, very grey and overcast Bristol. Hence the overhead headlight, I'm afraid. Um, I hope the lighting's okay. Um, it's good enough to make me look really, really tired, but hey. Uh, <laughs> I'm coming to you from a very grey and overcast Bristol where I live with my husband Paul, our eight-month-old baby boy Jasper, and our 10-year-old, very grumpy, Norwegian forest cat, Mufasa. Um, bless Mufasa, he's not having a good day. He's more grumpy than usual and it's my fault, I'm afraid. Uh, I feel really bad. Um, the last few days he's taken to sleeping. We've quite often got the pram in the living room or the hallway because Jasper quite often has an afternoon nap in it. And cat has taken to sleeping when he can when he can find the opportunity uh, in the basket underneath the pram. Now the basket underneath the pram is black and so is the cat. And this afternoon we were getting ready to go out for a walk. So I quickly just chucked the changing bag into the bottom of the pram, went to the cupboard to get my shoes and coat out and heard this like scrabbling noise. And out from underneath the changing bag appeared the cat. <laughs> He felt so bad. He looked very sorry for himself. He wasn't hurt, but I woke him up, which would put him out enormously because obviously, you know, 15 hours sleep a day isn't really enough. So, you know, honestly, that cat is living my best life. I don't know about his. Um, yeah, and do uh, forgive the eye bags. Um, Jasper woke up at 10 past two this morning. He never, pretty much never wakes up now unless he's ill or something. Um, he generally sleeps 12 hours at night, but last night he just, he, he's just learned to roll and he decided to roll in his sleep and got stuck and woke himself up. So, um, I had to go and roll him back, which woke him up properly, which meant a change in a feed. And then because we're not used to night feeds at the moment, neither of us could get back to sleep for ages. So yes. And then he woke up at half past six. So that was fun. But anyway, I feel like I've made some good progress with the knitting. So I've been itching to come back and share it with you. Um, yeah, we've been getting some longer naps, which is great because it means I make some good progress. Although the last three days, his normally hour and a half to two hour nap has gone back down to half an hour to 45 minutes. So it might slow down again, but, you know, I'll take it where I can, <laughs> honestly. Oh, dear. Um so thank you for your comments on my last video. It was really lovely to be back and it was so lovely to, to hear from so many of you. Um, I had quite a few questions about all the things I knit for Jasper and I thought, oh, I will talk about that on the podcast because I would have found this quite useful, I think. So people were saying, you know, has he has he worn all the things you knit for him? And basically the, the short answer is not really. Um, so he was born at the very end of May and there was kind of a bit of a heat wave after that. And then it kind of, well, it was kind of, it was a warm summer in general, but it was just wet, but it was hot. So it was too hot for knitwear when he was born. And actually most of the stuff I knit, because I didn't gauge swatch, not for baby stuff, um, kind of didn't fit. And then he grew very, very fast. So by the time he was eight weeks, he was in three to six month clothes. And by the time he was... I don't know, four months, he was in six to nine and he's been like that ever since. He's he's eight months now and he's at the tail end of 12 to 18 months. So nothing really fit him when I expected it to. Also, like, I didn't realise like the practicalities of these things. So like, um, so the little rompers, they all look really cute. But like, what do you put them with? <laughs> it's probably easier on a little girl when you can put them in a pair of tights, but... And it was too warm. I don't know. It just, lots of the things didn't work. Lots of the hats were too small and then he didn't need hats for ages. Or they were too big and then he didn't need hats for ages and then he grew out of them. I knit him a hat since he's been born and he wears that all the time. Um, the cardigans were useful because generally they were a bit on the big side. Um, so he wore though he he wears cardigans quite a lot. And what was quite useful was the penguino that I knit him because the sleeves were quite short. So when he was really teeny tiny, um, and you know, you still want to wrap them up quite warm, even though the weather was warm, um, those were quite useful because he was so tiny, but the sleeves weren't too long. So yes, lessons learned, I would say. It was you know, it was lovely making it all, but yeah, um, 
sort of didn't work out that practical or useful but hey it's fine I enjoy knitting them and um, some of them we've sort of kept for a little keepsakes and stuff like that so it's fine also like any of the socks just didn't fit him because he was born with the tiniest skinniest little legs and massive flipper feet <laughs> um, he's in one to two socks now um, he his feet are just massive but luckily now his legs are really chunky so he can hold the socks up um but yeah none of the socks would go anywhere near him that i made him so there you go you live and learn don't you but you know it was all exciting and the blankets blankets are the useful thing i, I should have just knit all blankets and we've got enough it's fine so anyway enough of all that waffle i've got a couple of finished object objects why can't i talk I'm tired that's why i can't talk i've got a couple of finished objects to show you a couple of works in progress two of which are new um no three are new three are new oh and i was finding something just now that i was gonna show you where have i put it oh i think i know hang on so this is not going well i i really really wanted to podcast today um so when Jasper woke up, I was like, Paul, can I, you know, are you all right to look after him while I go upstairs? He's like, yeah, yeah, of course, fine. So I came up, started recording, and he shouts up the stairs, Bex, are you going to podcast now? I'm like, I was. <laughs> and then something else happened, and I forgot what I was doing. So, yes, I, I'll get there in a minute. Calm down, woman. Okay, so, first finished object, I'm excited about this one. So this is my entry into Ali and Cherie's um, cosy winter blanket along. Um, and it is my finished granny wrap that I made in all green lampkin yarns. So it's very big, it's hard to show you. I absolutely powered through this because I just loved it. It was such a nice project for this time of year, sort of cosy, simple, um, kept my interest because obviously I was changing colours a lot um, and it was quite good because at the beginning I kind of managed managed the colours a bit in that I'd use a little bit, do a couple of rows and then swap so I didn't have big blocks of colour but once you get down here you could just use the whole thing until it ran out um, <clears throat> so that you didn't have to change so often because the rows were so long. So I used my Christmas Around the World advent um, and then any leftovers I had. I had a bunch of Christmas minis that Suzanne sent me a little while ago. I had some other leftovers from other projects in her yarns. I think this one here was from the sock set she gave me for Christmas um, and it was like a mini for heels and toes or whatever but I always do socks in one colour so I thought well I'll use it in there um so yes yeah, so it's absolutely gorgeous I love it it's huge and it's perfect for wrapping around oh it's just going to be so cosy this will be really handy because in the mornings when Jasper wakes up we usually get into bed I feed him we play for a bit and then he falls back to sleep usually in my arms so this would be the perfect thing for that really because I can stay warm and cosy while he's um all snuggled into me nice right um <clears throat> so yeah I'm really really happy with it and you'll see how happy I'm with it because I've got another one on the needles and plans for a third <laughs> um just such lovely project I used the pattern from Anna Boo's house um which I think was the one that Ali had used I can't remember but yeah just any simple granny um <clears throat> granny triangle pattern is fine um i used a four mil hook which i always use um with four ply yarn I, I am the tightest knitter and crocheter so i always go up massively and as you can see it's not a loose gauge at all <coughs> but yeah i love it i think did i weigh it it weighs somewhere in the region of 550 grams i think that sort of ballpark so it's really really nice and big and I love it really really pleased with that one so yeah I will talk about that a bit more in a minute anyway when I show you my works in progress my second finished object are my cloud song socks so these were a test knit that I think I just only just started last time um 
for my lovely friend Hannah who is Yarnia Designs and this pattern is actually out now it came out yesterday and if you check out Hannah's Instagram she has got a code for a discount on the pattern which is very kind of her these are just the softest squishiest most beautiful socks I can't wait to wear them in a bit I'm gonna get my pajamas on and put these on and be really cozy live in the my Saturday night dreams I tell you um so the yarns <coughs> um the four ply here is Grace from Bird Street Yarn so um it's just a merino nylon um four ply and then it's held with a mohair which is from um the very very lovely James Makes Yarn and that's in the delicate colorway and I'm just so happy with the colours. I think they just work so well together. I did a hill flap and gusset, which is my first time in years. It's what I always used to do. But then I discovered afterthought heels and magic heels and they were just quicker. Um, I didn't hate doing them. Um, I don't think I'll be in a hurry to do them again. But who knows? I might. I did an eye of partridge heel, which I think... I think Hannah put an eye of partridge heel in the pattern originally and then maybe changed it. But I don't know if she, I haven't looked at the final version of the pattern. I don't know if she's done options for both, but that's what I did. And I like it. I think it just looks really pretty. I've always liked an eye of partridge heel. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. I think it's all turned out quite neatly. How she's done these decreases is just so clever. Like they keep that pattern continued is so clever and I like the way on the top of the foot it's in um garter but she's kept it in stockinette on the bottom of the foot so that it's um like it doesn't irritate your foot it's a bit flatter um but I just think they're absolutely gorgeous I love them so much I've done my own toe I did a rounded toe because that's just my preference um and yeah they're just lovely so yeah do go and check out the pattern it really is a lovely knit and i've got a few more skeins of mohair which i'm quite tempted to make some more with i think these would make nice presents actually um cozy bed socks mm, lush and look even got my socks on sock blockers like a proper podcaster whoa okay so moving on um my next work in progress wasn't even dream knitting last time I saw you but I was chatting to my friends Joe and Rachel on WhatsApp who you will probably know as um the the knitting uh I'm trying to think of, I can't think of good words oh my god the, the knitting designing powerhouse that is Twin Set and Pearl um and they were talking about some of their patterns and uh Joe has recently designed this which is the Simon Shaw which um, is named after their brother. And I was just watching their podcast this morning and I was cracking up because they were saying that um, she should knit a match in Simon Cowell, which just made me laugh so much. So you've got to do it now, Joe, just because it would make me laugh. So I saw Joe. was she wearing it or was she still knitting it? I think she was still knitting it last time I saw her and I was like, oh, I love that, I need one. Um, but I hadn't really thought much more about it. And then um, Rachel very kindly sent me a copy of the pattern. So I thought, right, I'm doing it. So I, at first I started off with the yarn I dyed at the Lay Family Retreat. But this pattern needs contrast and I didn't have enough contrast between my colours. So I switched out the yarn in the end. <coughs> and what I've settled on is this what this navy which is deep from bird street yarn which is just one of my favorite colors probably one of my most used colors it's just perfect just the best deep blue and then this one which is actually a dandelion and dogwood yarn which i got a while back when they were doing a fundraiser for ukraine i think um, and this one is called the marvelous mrs maisel which i love the marvelous mrs maisel and so i had to have it um so it's like really really pale pastel-y with a few specks of really strong colour, some red and blue. Um, there's a little bit of yellow in there, pinks. It's just really pretty. And the contrast is really good while still kind of toning in with the blues. Um, so I'm really pleased with the yarns in the end. And this is how far I've got. I can't believe how much progress I've made so quickly, but it's such a great pattern. And what was useful is that there's like three increase sections and it was kind of really doable to kind of do a repeat 
of one of the sections during a nap or something like that so I've kind of made quite good progress and now I'm on to the section where you kind of maintain the same number of stitches for a while so I've got my progress keeper in here so I can count the rows easily without having to like keep a tally it's got a lovely i-cord edging which I always love I just think it looks so neat with an i-cord edging the increases are just so clever I love I love the way the edge looks along here with where the increases are so pretty um, and yeah I just love it I think it's going to be really wearable really like quite neutral go with a lot of things and I just love it yeah, you can see the colours like you still get the specks of colour the speckles in there but it's not um it doesn't kind of take away from the the sort of geometric design of it. Have I gone wrong there? Oh no. Yeah, there's a mistake there. I, I couldn't see it. You can't really see it to the naked eye, but on camera it really shows up down there. Oh, that's annoying, but it's staying. <laughs> you really honestly can't see it to the naked eye. I couldn't see it until I held it up to the camera. Oh well, didn't even notice it when I was doing it. That was obviously a tired day. But yeah, loving that one. Such a nice knit. Would really recommend it. And I'm, I'd love to make more in different colour combinations because it's really cool. So yeah, really nice pattern. Quite um, not memorisable, but intuitive. That's the word, intuitive. Sorry, I'm being such a div today. Right, next one. This well, this was a work in progress last time, but it's changed. So I was knitting some socks in this yarn, which is, sorry, it's caked really badly now, um, Gingerbread Snowflake from Green Lampkin Yarns. This one didn't actually appear in the shawl. Maybe I can add some when I finish the socks. Um, <coughs> and I was actually doing like a pearl bump pattern in it, but it started getting on my nerves. I couldn't be bothered with it. So I ripped it back and I'm just doing a vanilla sock now. And actually, do you know what? I'm really glad because it's such a pretty yarn. I love it. And I think the pearl bump texture was kind of taken away from how nice the yarn was on its own. So I'm quite happy with that. I've done a one by one rib and I'm just going to motor down the leg. These are the socks I keep beside the bed um, just in case. Like very occasionally, if I'm very lucky, I kind of wake up at half five when Paul's alarm goes off. Um, and Jasper might not wake up till like seven or something. So I get a bit of knitting time in. So I keep that beside the bed just in case. So the way he's going at the moment, it'd be slow progress because he keeps waking up at six. But, you know, I can live in hope. Um, so, yeah, those, I mean, there's no rush with those they're Christmas socks anyway. But I just really wanted to use the yarn because it's so pretty. So the next uh, work in progress was dream knitting last time. And I'm really pleased to have made a start. Um, this worked out really well actually this one so this is the two fold shawl by Melanie Berg um, now this worked out really well because basically this pattern starts off with just a load of garter um, and the detail doesn't come till near the end so it's quite good at the moment because I can just pick it up this can be kind of easy really easy knitting for quite a while and then you know when I find find myself ready to do it oh god I'm halfway through a row didn't realise that. Um, when I find myself ready to do something a bit more concentrated, then I can um, pick it up and uh, do that bit. So, um, now the first thing is I do wish, I've gone up a needle size, I believe. Let me just check. I always go up a needle size, especially on shawls because I love them bigger. Um, I knit so tightly. So required needles are 3.5. And I'm doing it on a 4.5, but I actually wish I'd gone a bit bigger again. A um, couple of reasons, because <coughs> the yarn I'm using is Drops Lima in the, oh, it just says colour 9010. Um, now, I've forgotten this about Wool Warehouse because I haven't really bought a lot of yarn lately. But when you buy yarn from a warehouse, like it says, whether it's like DK, four ply, whatever, but you can't ever fully trust it. So this one is actually 200 metres to, to 100 grams, which is a, a very, like it's a heavy DK, if not almost an Aran. Um, 
but I kind of didn't really realise that. It said DK, so I bought it. And then obviously I'm holding it double with the um, Rico Make It Tweed, which doesn't give it loads of bulk, but a little bit more so than like the sequin yarn. So the yarn's slightly heavier. So even though I've gone up a needle size, I probably could have gotten away with maybe a five um, to make it a little bit more drapey. But again, like I haven't got enough time to unpick it and it'll be fine i want it chunky and warm but so far i am really liking it i love the way the yarn looks i don't think this light is really showing it at its best but the little specks this is really what i was looking for like gray with some little bits of interest but not so much that it's like really dominant colors do you know what i mean and the edging i really like at the moment it's really simple it's like one row decrease in one row just knit so it's perfect for what I can manage at the moment it's the kind of thing that if Jasper's playing for a bit I might be able to squeeze a few rows in um so yeah really happy with it so far it'd be a long-term knit I probably won't get it finished while the weather's cold now so it doesn't have to be done in a hurry it'd probably be for next winter now but that's fine so yeah quite happy with it so far um but yeah just Remember, when you're buying wool from Wool Warehouse, just double check the meterage rather than taking their word for it. Because I quite often find, like, they sell, I think it's Drops Baby Merino, they sell as a four ply, but actually it's sport weight um, and things like that. So you have got to watch, you know, there's a big range. So, yes. But it's a lovely short and I'm so excited to put tassels on it. I think I'm going to find, I've got um, some little scraps of neon colours. So I might add some little neon tassels. We'll see when, when I get there. But yeah, that's a fun one. <coughs> so the second I finished this granny wrap, I wanted to start another. Um, so, and I think I said to you last time that I had up there in that big plastic um cocktail glass i had loads hundreds of minis um and i really wanted to use some of them up so i have started another granny wrap and this one's going to be all in kind of tonal yarn so i don't want, want any variegated in there i'm allowing a few speckles if they're kind of subtle speckles so for example like this one here got a couple of tiny speckles but nothing major this one's a good example sort of speckles of the same color because i want it just to be quite sort of bold if you like so this is the start i've made so far and i feel like i've hardly put any time into this so it's um it's you know it, it, you make good progress quickly and that's why it's such a nice project so i've got a mixture of yarns in here i've got some i know some of these were um, some Bird Street mini sets from a couple of years ago. I've got some kind of scraps from other projects. That was a cardigan I made for Jasper, actually. Um, <coughs> I've got a set of minis that I bought at the same time as the Mrs. Maisel yarn from Dandelion and Dogwood. So they've got a bit of sparkle in. I've got some totally random minis that I just found in my stash that I have no idea where they came from. But I've kind of gone for kind of some dark jewel kind of tones um but also some pastels but nothing too kind of bright if you like kind of more muted sort of uh jewel colors yeah um so i'm really happy with the progress so far and yeah enjoying working on it again it's another one that i can just pick up and put down really easily um and yeah it doesn't take much thought or effort which is key around here lately um so <coughs> that leads me quite nicely on to future knitting now i've been doing a bit of a de-stash i've got a de-stash account on instagram which is bexy norms de-stash um i've only got a couple of things there at the moment but keep an eye on it because i'm always adding bits and pieces i'm always trying to clear space um and I was going through like kind of my scraps because literally, I don't know if you can see, but one of these cubbies here is full of scraps. 
that really I'm not touching. And I was, I got an absolute load of leftovers of self-striping yarns. Um, so these, some of these were um, the Dotty Mall Company Friends Club. I think somebody sent me that one. I can't remember where it's from. I've got some probably Fab Funky Fibres. Um, I can't remember some of them, but there's quite a lot of different ones. Um, and I was kind of just going to bag them up and kind of sell them as a job lot of self striping yarn, you know, minis. But then I suddenly thought they would make a really cool granny wrap because you wouldn't have to change the colours because the, the, the yarn changes colour for you. So you could literally just use up your minis. <coughs> so I'm really excited to do this. I think it might be a really fun one. I might even like make it for Freya for her birthday or something like that because that's the kind of thing she might like if it's really bright and colourful to kind of cosy up with while she watches TV or something. So yeah, when I finished uh, this one here, I'm going to crack on with that one so that would be fun um i don't really have a lot in the way oh, i have hardly any acquisitions um i did pop to my local yarn store the other day what did i have to buy oh i know what it was i had to get some black cotton because i needed to sew a button on a shirt for paul um we didn't have any black cotton so i popped in there and um they had some of these rico Rumi um cotton dk balls reduced i think they were a pound um and i always use these to make um wondrous dish wondrous dish cloths um which we always use now i haven't bought like a sponge washing up sponge for it years um probably four years a bit more maybe um and we do need some new ones i've i've made new ones in the meantime but quite a lot of ours are looking a bit used and holy now so i do need to get around to doing that so i topped up my cotton stash to uh make a few extras of those which would be fun um i think now i don't have so many socks on the needles that might be a good one to cast on and literally about 10 minutes before i was filming this i was catching up with my gorgeous gainer on um her podcast tales from cuckoo land i'm sure you know gaina everybody knows gaina um and she had made a couple of um pairs of suzanne from green lambkin yarns thorny briar mitts um and i thought oh my god they're gorgeous i love them um and i've been saving this skein of willow dk um for something special and this would be perfect this is the um extra fine merino um with nylon and donegal naps and it's just the nicest dk yarn i can't like go on about it enough it is so soft honestly you'd think there was like cashmere or silk or something in here it's just the loveliest loveliest yarn if you haven't tried it get yourself on the Bird Street Yarn website um, and treat yourself because it's beautiful. It really, really is. I knit um, a bonbon bunny for Jasper in it and it's just the nicest yarn to knit with. I can't rave about it enough. Um, so yeah, I think this is going to become a pair of Thorny Briar mitts because that would be gorgeous. I think the pattern would look really lovely in it. It'd be really nice to wear on my hands because I want to see that colour, it's so nice. And um, it would go in my coats as well. So yes, that's a plan. Um, and it's really nice now. I feel like I can make knitting plans and I will actually get them done because I'm getting back up to a level of productivity, which is really exciting. So I will hopefully be back in another couple of weeks or so. Um, enjoy the rest of your day happy knitting take care and i will see you soon bye